Hello friends. Welcome to Pega Knowledge Base, where knowledge matters. So guys, actually we are in the series of improving the Godrail score by using various Pega rules. In the last video, we discussed about the activities. Okay, how we can improve the performance. Okay, how we can improve the Godrail compliance score. And again, I'm guaranteed that we will be learning something new in each and every video which I'm going to share. So in this video, we are going to see some of the other rules like class rules or data pages or else. Again, we will be seeing the clipboard we were. So how exactly we can improve the compliance score. So in this, as we said that the first thing which we are going to discuss in today is class rules. In the class rules, there is something called consider enabling propagate schema changes to child class for work classes to avoid explicit optimization at the customer end. Okay, mainly for the work classes, we have some option called propagate schema change to child classes. So where exactly is that? Let's see. And generally, whenever you open any of the class, right? So here I have one class here. So that is a BFS my auto work class. Okay, so in this class, if you go to the advanced tab, okay, here, if you scroll down, then there is a one checkbox, propagate schema changes to child tables. So what does it mean means, in case, in this work class, you would be having some properties, okay, like home loan or date of the policy which it has taken or else the vehicle type and all these things like that. Okay, so if you modify any of the property data type or else the size of the property and even if you add any new columns, otherwise if you remove any of the existing columns, so what happens, you know, in the older versions of the Pega, so we have to manually make those changes even in the child, child tables and even when you migrate the code to the higher environments also, what you have to do, you have to manually Okay, write the script to update the table to add the new column. Otherwise, modify the data type or else the size of the column. But from Pega 8 onwards, what happens, you know, by selecting this checkbox, if you create any column or else if you modify the existing column size or else the data type, it is going to automatically generate the script. And even if you create the wrap, Okay, I hope you know what is mean by wrap rule admin product by which we are going to be moving the changes from lower environments to the higher environments. So in that cases, even this schema query will be generated automatically. So this is the one of the important option which we can select. So which will be taken care of generating the query automatically. Okay, that is one thing. And the other one is like, so ensure that classes are not mapped to more than one purpose database table, such as PR underscore data or PR underscore other. Okay, so that means they don't want to map the classes to the specific to one particular table, okay, by which it is referring. So generally what happens, you know, um, now if you take this work class, so it is mapped to which database table? How we can see that in which database table these instances are storing in the general tab okay in the general tab if you scroll down you will be having something called test connection so if you select the test connection you see this is the D database and then this is the table on which it is going to save it tc underscore bfs underscore my auto underscore work table so this is the table which is available so in that table, all the work objects will be saved. Okay, so they want to have it like that. But in case if you see here, there are some tables like you see here, all the classes database tables I'm seeing. And here if you see here underscore data and apply, see this data hyphen admin saving into the PR underscore data underscore admin. Okay, so this execution also job schedule execution PR underscore data. 
okay so there are many tables okay which are mapped to the same database table simulation simulation key and like that okay in the same way if you see something called pr underscore other okay so here it is having only two classes okay but it is some generic table so what the pega is suggesting is instead of referring your class to some this generic table they wanted to have it to the specific table as i have shown you just now so this work class is going to be referring to the pc underscore bfs myato work so likewise they wanted to have the separate dedicated table for your classes which are saving the work objects so this is also one of the most important so what is the advantage of it why we need to have it for example if you are having some common table which is referring around 10 classes so if you want to retrieve the data which are related to only for that particular work table then it may take lot of time to retrieve out of 10 tables data but if you are having dedicated table only for this uh, my auto work class then it is easy okay for example for one table for one class 100 records are there so likewise for 10 tables 10 classes if it is having 1000 records in the same pr underscore data table to retrieve from the 1000 records it may take more time but if it is having only 100 records in your dedicated table it is going to improve the performance so that is also one of the thing so instead of referring to the pr underscore data or pr underscore other have a some dedicated table okay so and even maintenance of exposed properties for more than one type of data prevents using the correct indexes so even in case if you want to have any exposed properties also it is easy to retrieve from the specific data table which you have it and the third one is consider not storing the history of classes in environments in which changes are frequent and for which you have no business reason to track updates okay so for every change which you are doing on any of the particular class instance it is going to have the some history table in that history table it is going to save the records so what pega is suggesting is in case if you don't want to have any <clears throat> dedicated history of that particular changes you don't to save it okay and even here if you see our bfs hyphen my auto hyphen work apply oh this is not referring to the pr underscore other right so remove it see you see you have something called some history table in the same way whichever the class you have okay for that you will be having some history table I have some applicant to data type. Okay. So if you open that applicant data type, see, you have the history table. Okay. Work object anyway, it is fine. But in case if you are having some data type on which you will be having large amount of records which you will be saving, and even the frequency of changing the data in that particular data type also, maybe more okay so for these things if you don't want to save it that history instances if you don't want to save it so what we can do is on the particular main class okay on the particular main class if you open that particular class again open class record of this data type and if you go to the advanced okay in the advanced again if you scroll down okay there you will be having something called bypass history on save so on click of the any save of that particular instance of this particular class so whether you want to make it as a default or true or false okay so we have three options here if you make it false it will not save any changes which you made the history of the changes which you made not like changes you made on that applicant okay applicant record will be saved or updated or deleted but who made the change at what time he made a change so like that that kind of C information if you don't want to save then you can make it false and if you select true it will it will have the record for each and every change which you make on that particular record but if you make it as a default then it will only 
create a history snapshot when you click on save or delete only when you click on the save or delete of the particular record then only it will make a, it will add an entry into the history table so don't create snapshot when you call obj save or obj delete directly but through the activity in case if you make any changes for that particular record then also it will not save it okay then also it will not save it okay so here you see here in the last two video we have discussed like okay obj browse or obj open okay and then we made this changes okay px update record <clears throat> so if you do like this then it will not save when when you select this default option on that particular class okay if you make the default if you do it manually through obj save okay then it will not save so by default it is suggestible default but if you don't if you are having large number of records large number of transactions and even if you don't want the history like who is making the changes all those things then you can make it as a false okay so this is also one of the most important option okay which we can select based on the customer need okay so these are the three important things which we can make the changes in the class so the third one, the later one is the clipboard viewer so what is this clipboard viewer so in general what we will do you see just now i created an activity okay in that activity i have taken login page okay and then i have opened it and then i made the changes and saved it but later i did not remove it so this is one of the worst experience okay the people will be making okay worst habit so always try to use the page remove to remove the pages which you don't want in the later point of the functionality or else in some other activity so here we can make it clone page page remove so this is the very very important thing which we have to remember it okay that is the clipboard view and other changes like which we need to discuss is data page so what is what are the things which we need to consider to improve the compliance score on the data page means don't remove parameters for a data page so never remove parameters from shipped data pages in the framework layer so the implementation layer might use your data pages with key value removing a parameter might make reference rules invalid so for example so i have a some data page okay like d underscore applicant okay so in this d underscore applicant so in general it is taking the parameter py gui id okay so here if you remove this then it may be the problem why why because this data page which is already used in the functionality in the existing functionality by passing the gui id so now if you change this data page parameter from py gui id to some py id or something like that okay so and then the functionality may not work properly the functionality may not work properly and even if you remove completely also that's also one of the biggest challenge so if you remove this by which it is going to take it so that is also the problem so compulsory you must okay should not modify the parameters either removing or else adding any other one okay if you want you can create the new data page okay or circumstance it but don't remove the parameters for a data page like that which are already existing in the application and even running the load mechanism and every interaction for a data page can impact the performance so as you know that okay so here mainly okay if you are having a thread then you will be seeing here reload once per interaction so it is going to reload every time whenever you interact the data page so this is going to be highly impact the performance why because every time it is going to connect to the db and again retrieve the records so use wisely when you are selecting this option okay if you don't want to read it the data from the database for every time you open the case or else whenever you refer this data page okay so be cautious on selecting this check box okay and the, the next one select the correct user level access group for the node level data pages okay you see here as you all know that if it is a thread no problem but if you make it node level we must give the access group you see here we must give the access group in the load management okay but uh, for the thread it is not required to have the access group why it is not required 
Why? Because when it is the thread or requester, it is going to take the rule sets and the privileges and the access group, everything based on the operator who is running the case. Okay, but whereas the node level means it is going to load only once whenever the server starts or else based on the reload mechanism. So at that time, based on which rule sets, this case processing should happen, this data page processing should happen. Okay, that will be decided based on this access group. So here, always try to have the separate access group for this node level data pages. Okay, create an access group used specifically for broad processing. That is nothing but a data page loading and agent activity processing. So have the dedicated access group for the node level data pages. Okay, so this is also one of the important. Okay. And avoid adding required parameters to old rules. Okay, and even for the old rules also, avoid adding the required parameters. So that means here, as we already discussed that there is something called, okay, one pa parameter was there. Okay, and in this parameter, right now it is having the required, yes, that is fine. Okay, for the, whenever they created this data page, initially itself, it is having the required, yes. But initially if it is having no, now, if you make this parameter as required, then it is going to impact huge. Why? Because as it is not required, the people may not be paused initially. But now, by making it is required, then that data page calling will be filed. Okay. So, always remember that the existing data pages, if it is having the required parameter, no, don't change it to the yes. Okay. Otherwise, you must completely have the understanding of the complete ap application, complete functionality, where exactly this data page is used and there and all, you are passing the parameter compulsory, then only you can make it as a yes. Okay, otherwise your application is going to break. Whenever this data page reaches and the optional data, optional parameter is not paused while calling the data page, then when it reaches to the, when the flow reaches to that particular level, then it is going to break it. So be cautious even while making the parameter required. Yes. Okay. So these are the things guys. So I would like to tell about the data page class and clipboard viewer. Okay. So if you think that if you learned and if you, it is useful for you, so please feel free to like and comment and share it to your friends so that it will be useful for others. Thank you all. In the next class, we will be seeing something else. Okay, so as part of this, like uh, data transform rules and any other rules by which we can improve the compliance score. Thanks, guys.